Tycho Brahe, born Tiger Ottesen Brahe, was a Danish nobleman known for his accurate and comprehensive astronomical and planetary observations. He was born in Scania, then part of Denmark, now part of modern-day Sweden. Tycho was well known in his lifetime as an astronomer, astrologer and alchemist and has been described more recently as the first competent mind in modern astronomy to feel ardently the passion for exact empirical facts. In his De Nova Stella of 1573, he refuted the Aristotelian belief in an unchanging celestial realm. His precise measurements indicated that new stars, in particular that of 1572, lacked the parallax expected in sublunar phenomena, and were therefore not tailless comets in the atmosphere as previously believed but were above the atmosphere and moon. Using similar measurements he showed that comets were also not atmospheric phenomena, as previously thought and must pass through the supposedly immutable celestial spheres. As an astronomer, Tycho worked to combine what he saw as the geometrical benefits of the Copernican system with the philosophical benefits of the Ptolemaic system into his own model of the universe, the Tychonic system. Furthermore, he was the last of the major naked eye astronomers working without telescopes for his observations. Tycho Brahe was granted an estate on the island of HVEN and the funding to build Uraniborg, an early research institute, where he built large astronomical instruments and took many careful measurements, and later Stjernborg underground, when he discovered that his instruments in the former were not sufficiently steady. On the island he founded manufactories such as a paper mill to provide material for printing his results. After disagreements with the new Danish king Christian IV in 1597, he was invited by the Bohemian king and Holy Roman Emperor Rudolf II to Prague, where he became the official imperial astronomer. He built the new observatory at Benet Kinad Jezero, there, from 1600 until his death in 1601. He was assisted by Johannes Kepler who later used Tycho's astronomical data to develop his three laws of planetary motion. His body has been exhumed twice, in 1901 and 2010, to examine the circumstances of his death and to verify what material his artificial nose was made of. The conclusion was that his death was likely caused by a burst bladder as first suggested and that the artificial nose was more likely made of brass than silver or gold as believed in his time. Life Early years Tycho was born at his family's ancestral seat of Nutstorp Castle, about 8 kilometers north of Svalov in then Danish Scania, now Swedish, to Otto Brahe and Beata Billa. His twin brother died before being baptized. Tycho wrote a Latin ode to his dead twin, which was printed in 1572 as his first published work. He also had two sisters, one older and one younger. Otto Brahe, Tycho's father, was a nobleman and an important figure at the court of the Danish king. His mother, Beata Billa, came from an important family that had produced leading churchmen and politicians. Both parents are buried under the floor of Kajarod Church, four kilometers east of Nutstorp. An epitaph, originally from Nutstorp but now on a plaque near the church door, shows the whole family, including Tycho as a boy. Tycho later wrote that when he was around age two, his uncle, Danish nobleman Jorgen Thygis and Brahe, without the knowledge of my parents took me away with him while I was in my earliest youth to become a scholar. Apparently, this did not lead to dispute, nor did his parents attempt to get him back. According to one source, Tycho's parents had promised to hand over a boy child to Jorgen and his wife, who were childless, but had not honored this promise. Jorgen seems to have taken matters into his own hands and took the child away to his own residence, Tosterip Castle. Tycho attended Latin school from ages 6 to 12, but the name of the school is not known. It is also thought he may have been taught by a private tutor between these ages. 
At age 12, on 19 April 1559, Tycho began studies at the University of Copenhagen. There, following his uncle's wishes, he studied law, but also studied a variety of other subjects and became interested in astronomy. The solar eclipse of 21 August 1560, especially the fact that it had been predicted, so impressed him that he began to make his own studies of astronomy, helped by some of the professors. He purchased an ephemeris and books on astronomy, including Johannes de Sacrobusco's De Sphera Mundi, Petrus Apianus's Cosmographia Seu Descriptiotosius Orbis and Regimontanus's De Triangulis Omnimodish. Jorgen Thyges and Brahe, however, wanted Tycho to educate himself in order to become a civil servant, and sent him on a study tour of Europe in early 1562. Tycho was given the 19-year-old Anders Sorensen Videl as mentor, whom he eventually talked into allowing the pursuit of astronomy during the tour. Videl and his pupil left Copenhagen on February 1562 and arrived in Leipzig in March 24 where they matriculated at Leipzig University. In Leipzig Brahe was obliged to study astronomy in secret. Tycho realized that progress in astronomy required systematic, rigorous observation, night after night, using the most accurate instruments obtainable. This program became his life's work. Tycho improved and enlarged existing instruments, and built entirely new ones. His sister Sophia assisted Tycho in many of his measurements. Tycho was the last major astronomer to work without the aid of a telescope, soon to be turned skyward by Galileo and others. Tycho jealously guarded his large body of celestial measurements, which Kepler took under his care following Tycho's death. Tycho's nose while studying at the University of Rostock in Germany. On 29 December 1566 Tycho lost part of his nose in a sword duel against fellow Danish nobleman, Mandera Parsberg. Tycho had earlier quarreled with Parsberg over the legitimacy of a mathematical formula. At a wedding dance at Professor Lucas Barkmeister's house on the 10th, and again on the 27th, since neither had the resources to prove the other wrong, they ended up resolving the issue with a duel. Though the two later reconciled, the duel two days later resulted in Tycho losing the bridge of his nose. From this event, Tycho became interested in medicine and alchemy. For the rest of his life, he was said to have worn a replacement made of silver and gold, using a paste or glue to keep it attached. Some people, such as Friedrich Iron and Cecil Adams, have suggested that the false nose also had copper. Iron wrote that when Tycho's tomb was opened on June 24, 1901, green marks were found on his skull, suggesting copper. Cecil Adams also mentioned a green coloring and that medical experts examined the remains. Some historians have speculated that he wore different prosthetics for different occasions noting that a copper nose would have been more comfortable and less heavy than a precious metal one. Nonetheless, in November 2012, Danish and Czech researchers, after chemically analyzing a small bone sample from the nose from the body exhumed in 2010, reported the prosthetic was made out of brass. Death of his uncle His uncle and foster father, Jorgen Brahe, died in 1565 of pneumonia after rescuing Frederick II of Denmark from drowning. In April 1567, Tycho returned home from his travels and his father wanted him to take up law, but Tycho was allowed to make trips to Rostock then on to Augsburg, Basel, and Freiburg. At the end of 1570 he was informed about his father's ill health, so he returned to Nutstorp Castle, where his father died on 9 May 1571. Soon after, his other uncle, Steen Biller, helped him build an observatory and alchemical laboratory at Herivard Abbey. Family life towards the end of 1571, Tycho fell in love with Kirsten, daughter of Jorgen Hansen, the Lutheran minister in Knustrup. She was a commoner, and Tycho never formally married her. However, under Danish law, when a nobleman and a common woman live together openly as husband and wife, 
and she wore the keys to the household at her belt like any true wife. Their alliance became a binding morganatic marriage after three years. The husband retained his noble status and privileges, the wife remained a commoner. Their children were legitimate in the eyes of the law, but they were commoners like their mother and could not inherit their father's name, coat of arms, or land holdings. However, Kirsten and Tico's children were later testified as legitimate by Tico's younger sister, Sophie. Kirsten Jorgenstatter gave birth to their first daughter, Kirsten, on 12 October 1573. Together they had eight children, six of whom lived to adulthood. In 1574, they moved to Copenhagen where their daughter Magdalene was born. Kirsten and Tycho lived together to for almost 30 years until Tycho's death. Tycho's elk Tycho was said to own 1% of the entire wealth of Denmark at one point in the 1580s. Better source needed, Tycho often held large social gatherings in his castle. Pierre Gassendi wrote that Tycho also had a tame elk and that his mentor the landgrave Wilhelm of Hesse Castle asked whether there was an animal faster than a deer. Tycho replied, writing that there was none, but he could send his tame elk. When Wilhelm replied he would accept one in exchange for a horse, Tycho replied with the sad news that the elk had just died on a visit to entertain a nobleman at Landskrona. Apparently during dinner the elk had drunk a lot of beer, fallen down the stairs, and died. Death Tycho suddenly contracted a bladder or kidney ailment after attending a banquet in Prague, and died 11 days later, on 24 October 1601 at the age of 54. After he had returned home he was no longer able to urinate, except eventually in very small quantities and with excruciating pain. The night before he died he suffered from a delirium during which he was frequently heard to exclaim that he hoped he would not seem to have lived in vain. Before dying, he urged Kepler to finish the Rudolphine tables and expressed the hope that he would do so by adopting Tycho's own planetary system, rather than that of Copernicus. It was reported that Brahe had written his own epitaph. He lived like a sage and died like a fool. A contemporary physician attributed his death to a kidney stone, but no kidney stones were found during an autopsy performed after his body was exhumed in 1901, and the 20th century medical assessment is that it is more likely to have resulted from uremia. The 1990s investigations have suggested that Tycho did not die from urinary problems but instead from mercury poisoning. It was speculated that he had been intentionally poisoned. The two main suspects were his assistant, Johannes Kepler, whose motives would be to gain access to Brehe's laboratory in chemicals, and his cousin, Eric Brahe, at the order of friend-turned-enemy Christian IV due to rumors at the time that Tycho had had an affair with Christian's mother. However, in February 2010 Prague City Hall approved a request by Danish scientists to exhume the remains. And in November 2010 a group of Czech and Danish scientists from Aarhus University collected bone, hair and clothing samples for analysis. The scientists, led by Dr. Jens Velev, analyzed Tycho's beard hair once again. The team reported in November 2012 that not only was there not enough mercury present to substantiate murder, but that there were no lethal levels of any poisons present. The team's conclusions was that, it is impossible that Tycho Brahe could have been murdered, and that he, most likely died of a burst bladder. The findings were confirmed by scientists from the University of Rostock who examined a sample of Brahe's beard hairs that had been taken in 1901. Although traces of mercury were found, these were present only in the outer scales. Therefore, mercury poisoning as the cause of death was ruled out while the study suggests that the accumulation of mercury may have come from the precipitation of mercury dust from the air during Brehe's long-term alchemistic activities. Tycho's body is currently interred in a tomb in the Church of Our Lady before teen, in Old Town Square near the Prague Astronomical Clock.